clear glass all over the earth that exists in that time period and it seems like something happened that reset civilization. The From endless sandy landscapes to the scorching sun and the complete absence of human life, that is how we have always imagined the Sahara Desert. Is it possible that the land as we see today was once entirely green and full of life? And what's more intriguing is what lies underneath the sand dunes of the desert. Join us as we explore what scientists just uncovered under the Sahara Desert which shocked the entire world. The Sahara Desert is not the largest on Earth, the Antarctic Desert holds the primacy. But among the usual deserts with sand, heat, and dunes, the Sahara is really the largest. The desert covers almost one-third of the entire continent of Africa, spanning over 8.5 million square kilometers in land area. The Sahara spans across 10 African countries and is surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean, the Red Sea, and the Mediterranean Sea. With each passing year, the desert relentlessly expands to the south, claiming an additional 5 to 10 kilometer annually. While the common perception of the Sahara is one of towering sand dunes, cacti, and a lack of flora and fauna, in reality only 20% of its terrain is covered by sand. The predominant landscape consists of rocky plateaus. The sand dunes in the Sahara can reach up to 200 meters, and some dunes produce sounds that merge into a bizarre melody due to the oscillating sand grains under the influence of the wind. But you might be wondering, where does the sand come from? Well, the extreme temperature changes throughout the day and night cycle have a destructive effect on the rocks, causing them to crack and gradually turn into sand, which replenishes the desert sand layer. Some unusual areas of the Sahara also contain transparent pieces of weathered glass believed to have formed from meteorite impacts millions of years ago. The terrain isn't the only prone thing to these extreme conditions, it affects the plant and animal life as well. Although this region is really not rich in animals, there are still about 4,000 species, among which there are mammals, gerbils, gerboas, antelopes, jackals, dune cats and mongooses. Most of these inhabitants are nocturnal, and during the day they hide in shelters from the scorching sun. This is because the temperature regime of the desert is prone to large fluctuations during the day. The average air temperature reaches 35 degrees, but the sun heats the sand more than twice as much, so it creates a feeling of being in a hellish frying pan. Despite the harsh conditions, about 2 million people also live in the Sahara besides the animals. These people belong mainly to the tribes of Berbers and Tuaregs. In medieval times, trade caravans traveled through the desert, the largest of which, according to Arab historians, consisted of almost 12,000 camels. The Sahara Desert is a dry and hot climate with rare precipitation averaging only 75 millimeters of rain per year. The highest recorded temperature is nearly 58 degrees, while the temperature at night drops quickly to almost zero degrees, with frosts occurring in mountain plateaus with temperatures as low as 18 degrees. Despite the harsh climate, their desert hosts a variety of flora, including over 30 species of endemic plants like fern, ficus, acacia cacti, and date palms. The highest point of the Sahara is the peak of Imikusi, rising 3.4 km above sea level. Rich deposits of gas and oil have been discovered on the territory of the desert. In the Sahara, under the influence of southern winds, monstrous sandstorms are born, which then hit the surrounding countries and sometimes rage for several days. For example, every year, powerful winds bring down clouds full of sand raised in the Sahara on the African island country of Cape Verde, creating many inconveniences for local residents. Apart from the harsh climate, mirages are another fascinating feature of the Sahara. This is fascinating since the only river flowing through the desert's borders is the Nile. A mirage is an optical phenomenon in the atmosphere. A refraction of the light stream occurs at the boundary between layers of air that differ in density and temperature. More than 150,000 mirages are observed in the Sahara. Even maps of places where they can be seen have been created. The difference from reality lies in the fact that together with a really visible image of an object, its reflection in the atmosphere is visible. Although rain is scarce, there are permanent lakes, like the Ionianga group of lakes in the Sahara. Despite the harsh climate, the Sahara is rich in unique geological and biological features that continue to fascinate scientists and explorers alike. 
How many people traveling through the desert have suddenly seen oases with water and palm trees, thinking that they are about two or three kilos away from them? In fact, it is sometimes necessary to walk 500 or more kilometers to the nearest water. It should be noted that this desert is much more generous to its inhabitants than it might seem at first glance, but in fact, the Sahara has not always been the way we know it today. It's hard to believe, but about 8,000 years ago, there was a green forest with lush vegetation, white grass meadows, and clear lakes on the site of the Sahara. There was also a huge Taman Rakat River that flowed into the Atlantic Ocean. It was discovered in 2015 using three-dimensional satellite images. They also found the edges of Lake Chad, which in ancient times was much wider and deeper than it is now and was considered the largest on the planet, according to experts. In 10 to 12,000 years, people have the opportunity to see the Sahara green again. Scientists have different assumptions about why the green region turned into an arid desert. Some blame livestock, which absorbs such a huge number of plants that they did not have time to grow and reflect sunlight, and therefore the sun began to burn the earth and the remaining vegetation. Others, on the contrary, claim that grazing and distillation have prolonged the life of the Sahara for 500 years. Still others are sure that the Earth's axis is to blame, which changes its tilt every 20,000 years. Its displacement affects the intensity of sunlight. Another interesting feature of the barren land, Sahara, is that it has its own stone henge, which is called Napti Playa. This structure consists of two three-meter stones weighing several tons, lined up in circles in five rows. Napti Playa is older than Stonehenge by more than four and a half thousand years, making it one of the oldest archaeological sites in history. In the very center of the Sahara, archaeologists have discovered ancient rock carvings, indicating that primitive people once lived in these parts. Probably in these places, there were many settlements of people who cultivated the land and raised cattle. And while we're on the subject of the past, the Sahara's history dates back to the Mesozoic era, when it was an ocean called Tethys, teeming with giant ancestors of whales, snakes, turtles, and dinosaurs. The continent's separation resulted in the ocean's disappearance and now fossilized remains of these ancient creatures, including one of the world's largest dinosaurs, have been found in the Sahara's middle. This place is now called the Valley of the Whales, perhaps the main wonder of the Sahara and one of the main mysteries of the planet is located in Mauritania and is called the Rigid Structure. This is a ring structure with a diameter of 50 km and dating back several hundred million years. For a long time, the eye of the desert served as a reference point for astronauts because it is perfectly visible from orbit, and this is the only obvious landmark in the vast expanse of an unremarkable desert. There are several hypotheses explaining this phenomenon, according to one of which, the appearance of a ring structure is the result of erosion. In order to uncover the most important secrets, one should go deep into the very heart of this desert. There is a treasure of the Sahara under a lot of dunes. There is very little water on the surface of the desert because of the low rainfall, but under the sands of the Sahara, there are vast pools of groundwater. It is thanks to these pools that oases can be found in the Sahara. Areas are rich in vegetation. Most of the oases here arise in places where water from underwater rivers makes its way to the surface. Some countries located on the territory of the groundwater of the Sahara are engaged in the extraction of this priceless liquid. The most fertile in this regard is the northeastern part of the desert, where Sudan, Chad, Egypt, and Libya are located. The aquifer in Libya is more extensive. Underground water has been extracted here since the 1970s, and in 1983, work began on a huge project, the purpose of which was to deliver drinking water to the dehydrated settlements of Libya. Regular water supply for all major cities of the country was established by the year 1996. This grandiose system, called the Great Man-Made River, delivers six and a half million cubic meters of drinking water every day. In 2008, it was entered into the Guinness Book of Records, recognizing it as the largest irrigation project. The Great Man-Made River consists of 1,300 wells more than 500 meters deep, as well as numerous water pipes and reservoirs. All this would be impossible without the presence of an aquifer under the sands of the Sahara. 